All right, ladies and gents, welcome. Uh, we've got some Land Madness action here in World Rumble 2. For those that don't know who what World Rumble 2 is, hold on, i got to move this image. Still have to clarify to have both of these on here. Uh, World Rumble 2 is an event that features a lot of high-level players, but it does exclude players who've had really big performances, I believe, like top eight in S-tier events over the last few years. Meaning that maybe some of your favorite players at the very top aren't in it, but it does also give uh, some of your favorite players who are maybe not quite there yet opportunities without being knocked out in the early rounds, let's say, by one of those very big names. Uh, and so I know a lot about these individuals, and it I play against these individuals all the time, and I feel like uh, it's an important opportunity to educate you guys on how good these guys are. So we've got Uzi, who is the best Mexican player, and Uzi is really solid. Um, I think in Titans League qualification, for those that followed that this past year, uh, Uzi had just missed out on Titans League by one game. And he's playing as the Chinese here, which is, I think, one of the best civilizations for this map. Stark, then, has been around a long time. Uh, as far as I know, like, early, mid-30s. If you watched and you saw uh, Hidden Cup qualifiers, Stark was a beast in Hidden Cup qualifiers. And almost qualified for the event, which surprised everybody. He is known for being a bit slower, but honestly, Uzi's not one of the fastest players at a high level either. Both these players thrive on good economy and good consistency here. And we've got the Georgians for Stark. Now, Lord Benji in my chat says, why people still picking the Georgians? Georgians are insane right now. I'm going to tell you why. So you start with the mule cart, right? Uh, which they always did ever since the Civ has been introduced. But when the Civ was introduced, they didn't have as much food to compensate for getting a free lumber camp. Uh, but now, they... They have all the food again, and there's no wood discount either. If anything, maybe they should have less wood or something. And look at this build from Stark. Stark is like, okay, because I have so much wood savings, because I start with the free lumber camp, I go three on wood, which is a normal timing for three on wood. You get so much wood then that you could still afford a barracks, still afford a, uh, still afford a house. And now Stark is using the mule cart on the hunt too. This is a very interesting build order from him. And it, it may be designed around trying to kill the Chinese just because of how good the Chinese can be. Now, Stark is horribly unlucky right now, guys. He has missed the boar by a millimeter. He he might even remember the boar was over here. And now, now he sees the boar. But he is going to go for two militia here, and he has to go find Uzi now. Now, drushing on this map... This whole militia rush, this is really rare. Uh, you don't normally see it. This is normally a scout rush map. So I think Stark is just concerned about the Chinese. Because Chinese are so strong. Uh, the devs basically buffed them as well recently. Which, I mean, Chinese are already banned out. Chinese already has crazy win rates in tourneys. Chinese are also even better on land madness because the berries underneath the TC. But anyways, uh, Chinese are going to be hard to stop. And Uzi's going to be like, huh? Uzi sees the militia and is, is probably really confused. All right. So the thing I'll say about Land Madness is, at least this version, <coughs> is you uh, you do only have one boar. So denying some of the deer push from the Chinese is nice. But Uzi knows that his opponent is drushing because he saw the militia and he's on the way to Feudal Age. I do respect... The build order here from Stark, but I do wonder what's the follow-up going to be and how the execution will play out here. But yeah, I find the Georgian scouts are also really, really strong. So, uh, Yeah, guys, this tourney is not with Sudden Death. This tourney is World Rumble 2, which I just introduced. If you have questions, feel free to ask. Sorry for the confusion of going back and forth between different tourneys today, but like I said, a good problem to have. That there's so many different events. We just had a schedule mix up in the other series. So, what's sudden death mean? Uh, sudden death is is if your town centers are destroyed, you're defeated. Pay attention to my YouTube this week. There's going to be a ton of crazy uploads with sudden death if you're interested in that. So this is interesting. Stark hasn't clicked up yet, 
And I wonder if in his mind, he didn't have the two Dark Age buildings. But he actually did. He had the mule cart. And he had the barracks. But I think in his mind, he was like, I need the mill before going up. Because of how different this build order is. From his standard game. So I don't, I think he added the extra vills. Because he thought, oh crap, I forgot my mill. But because he has the mule cart and the barracks, he could have actually gone up. Very late uptime here from Stark, then. Right now, he's just attacking a house. Uzi actually walks around to repair the house, and Uzi has pretty much not been bothered by this at all. He's making scouts. He's going to move out to the other berries. Uzi's playing very strong here. We'll see. Stark will probably go scouts as well, but Stark's not going to be up for a while, and so... I, I am a, a really big fan of Uzi's position currently. Yeah, I don't I don't think Stark is going to go to the gold, but maybe it's a position where he could sneak into the gold. Go for something like Archer Spears. But the opponent has three scouts already, and Stark can't make Spearmen. This is rough. Like, I respect the build. The, the, the thought, I guess. But what I would have liked to have seen is just... just go crazy scouts but i guess against chinese you're always thinking of a way to get ahead because they are so good with their start uzi's looking good here that scout's likely going to go down here for stark it's close to it anyways uzi being patient and yeah that's what you need here like in this situation if you're uzi you just need to realize okay my opponent's going scouts i already have three of them but just keep that scout number up and not take any poor engagements here. Now Uzi's got tons on berries. He's shifting to gold. This actually feels like he's not going to farm as much. And he actually wants to go into archers. Maybe realizing that Stark is going to go spear defense. So I can see the logic there. Kirby says, does anyone know if two mule carts count as two Dark Age buildings? Like how a lumber camp and mining camp is enough. Um, ooh, that, so you mean, like, if you have, uh, two of them, if it counts? That's interesting. I don't actually know. I think you have to have two different ones. I don't think you can have two of the same building, right? So, like, you can't have two lumber camps, for example. I think it's the same with mule carts, even though mule carts count as either a, you know, count as, as like, different types of buildings. I don't actually know, but I would say I'm 97.1% certain that uh, you do need to have the uh, like the two different buildings. So, so there's the range. It's going to be archers from Uzi. Stark hasn't been broken. Uzi has that villager lead. Res collected as well because of it. Good eco upgrades as well. I am wondering what happens economically when these nine villagers finish the berries. Now, that's an awfully specific thing to point out. But those are the types of things you look for here. Are you pre-planning here if you're Uzi? Stark's going to see his opponent's going to have some archers now, so he needs to ramp up the scout production. But Stark's resources are looking very nice here, I have to say. His eco balance isn't bad. Archers could threaten the spears, but of course the scouts from Stark could maybe find those archers. So we'll see what happens, but... I think what is amazing here for Uzi, if he has, he has two spear, yeah, two spears, two archers. Feels like just enough to really threaten Stark right now. Hmm. Yeah, and fletching upgrade could come in as well for Uzi. Uh, I mean, still, I'm noticing one of the spears is weak there. Stark is, is kind of forced to just fight this off at some point here. He's going to drop a tower on the stone. It has a mule cart there. But that means no tower on the wood. You cannot wall on the rock terrain. So units could pass right through to his wood line. This is actually the area where he might have needed the tower. Stark still massing scouts. Slowly the Georgian scouts heal up throughout this. But this is Uzi's moment. He's been building up for this. Can he micro it properly? Oh, is it messy? Ah, I think this might be good for Stark, actually. I can't tell. Yeah, Stark actually is going to win the fight fully. Wow, that was a complete clear. An amazing engagement. And, it, you know, it's so tricky because on paper, Uzi's army could have been so good. 
But sometimes the simplicity of sticking with scouts is the way to go. And Stark's all about simplifying his game, and he gets another pick off now. And now the weak scouts in here heal in feudal. Also, Stark's still out here on the hunt. Stark's farming eco looks great. And now Uzi has to fall back and defend with a bunch of military back home. And archers are pretty much useless now. Like, you cannot move out with low numbers of archers with this number of scouts. It's all about scouts and spears on this map, usually. Yeah, last time I watched Uzi play, he still... I don't know how to describe this. Well, no, I do know how to describe it. He, he's a very talented player on the ladder. There's a lot of players like this. They need more tourney experience, which World Rumble's perfect for. And once you get the reps in, in theory, like, I'm still waiting for this to happen, but in theory, like, the nerves settle a little bit more, or you just get more used to the nerves. And then you, you're able to play more towards your strengths in the tournaments themselves. But here in this game, man, like, Stark's opening was unique. He defended from the response from his opponent. And Stark just always finds a way to have a good economic position. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've opened aggressively against Stark, and then he defends from it, and then he somehow is in Castle Age faster. It's crazy. And he's just so good at it, man. All that experience, all those years of playing the game. I want to see, what does Capture Age say their speed is? Uh, Uzi isn't considered that quick either. Yeah, these guys are pretty much the same. Uzi's one of the... Uzi and Stark, I think these are two of the slowest 2K3, 2K4 plus players, I would say. But I think, I, I like like anyone, anytime we're talking about someone being slow at a high level, it's, you know, making a mountain out of a molehill. Everyone's fast. T90, are you in this tourney? No, I really wanted to play, but I, I'm going home with family. So I couldn't play the second round of the qualifier. This is like the tourney, man. Like, this is the type of thing that would be really good for someone like me, and just the timing was was really bad. So, don't think I would have qualified for the main event, but playing in this qualifier would have been good experience for me. Look at look at how Stark is repositioning with these villagers on the mule card. That's crazy. Oh, has to be careful here. And archers are going to be on the way here. <laughs> Joey says, imagine prioritizing family over work, the nerve. Well, honestly, I probably would have, if I knew the tournament was happening before I booked flights, I might have switched my family time around. <laughs> um, that, actually, that's not necess That's not true. It is my dad's 70th birthday, so I'm, ha I'm not just going home for no reason, but I'm looking forward to family. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely a, a big occasion for me to be home for, and I miss them, so... But also, this is like, I, you know, I want to be in here, man. I want to be in Uzi or Stark shoes playing in this right now. But would be, it's a really competitive qualifier. So just enough skirms to push this back here from Stark. Stark's in the next stage now. Dropping a castle, which usually is so hard to get to on this map. And now he's going to have Manaspa. Res collected, still very even. Uzi's going to be in the next stage now. Uzi can make a knight or two and upgrade his crossbows, and his army is still fine here. Uzi's done a nice job stabilizing after losing his army. He didn't lose many villagers. He just lost one. He'd have to use the market a little bit, which I actually have to turn market events back on. But Stark's skirms probably are going to be pushed away by the knights. He has to be very careful here. And at home, Stark is expanding his eco. But yes, this is sloppy from Stark. Investing into Elite Skirm and losing all of them just like this, that's not pretty. There's TC number two. So Knight Crossbow, can they find the areas for damage? Becomes tricky to do that when the TCs are positioned in this exposed area. Here there's a tower, here there's a castle. It'll feel impossible to do damage against Stark if you're Uzi right now. And then you're going to have to shift into defending yourself. Because Stark, if he feels like he can't be damaged, he's going to send Manaspa to your base. Or scouts or something. Mm. Building that 
third TC is probably something Stark's looking forward to doing. Uzi sees this area and says, okay, at least I can deny some farms. At least I can pressure here. And now he's scouting this area with the spear to see what's up. Doesn't know about the castle yet. I think these villagers are going to build a TC for Stark. Ultimately, what he re needs right now is he needs more skirms to push back the crossbows, and he needs maybe some Manaspa, but hasn't produced many Manaspa. Uzi's pressure is paying off here. And this is what the best players will do. It's like, fine, you're not going to address me? I'm going to take out your farms. So you're going to have to invest in new farms at the very least. Well, scouts, though. Remember, these are the same scouts, right? They've healed up now. And Stark brings them in, kills a villager. Camels were waiting. The camels are going to address this, but nice job from Stark. He's going to get another villager kill. Now, could maybe use this time to try and use those skirms on the crossbows. Uzi's still okay, though. Uzi drops the second TC. And Uzi took out the stable as well from Stark. But Stark already got bloodlines, and he's already going for Manaspa. Does Uzi know about the Manaspa yet? Okay, he does know the castle's there. So he's probably... It's a tough feeling. You're probably uncertain on if you want to move forward right now. Because on one hand, you want to damage your opponent because they've damaged you. On the other hand, it's like... You dive too deep, you're not getting away from here. But he has killed some Vils. He sees the skirms now, and now he's going to back away. And maybe group up with this army. Stark, three TCs. Built that third TC in the back. Stark really hasn't made many Manaspa here. It's just kind of eco and skirms right now. Still think we will see a lot of Manaspa, but he doesn't want to rush it now, and he prioritizes his economy here. Nuka says, I feel like Stark had a lot of time to get those archers before Uzi was in castle. Weird to me he didn't fight. Hmm. Um, I mean, the, the problem for Stark, he actually repeated this step in Castle Age 2. Stark was very late to upgrades. Like, right now, he just got Bodkinera for his skirms. That was a problem early, Castle Age. The other problem was the timing of when he moved forward. But the skirms that he had in Feudal Age weren't upgraded until he, like, he got to the middle of the map. And then by that point, Uzi was in Castle Age. But I can agree. Getting, finding the opponent's army and really jumping on it and getting those kills efficiently... Uh, it is are important. It just didn't happen. This is a close game. I think Camel Crossbow versus Manaspa Skirm, pretty close. I think I would prefer Camel Crossbow. But the Manaspa have more potential for ending the game with, with raids. And wow, they're going to pass each other here. That's crazy that they didn't see each other here. Stark's army is together. Uzi's going to realize that. But Uzi's going to try and get back here. Again, it's like, where... You really are probably going to feel like, what damage can I do to this guy? Happens every time when you're playing against Stark. Also, Monk is going to find these villagers. Uzi already has three relics here. Stark is not going to expect this army back here because he just saw bits and pieces of the other units trickling forward. Stark is going to see this now. And Uzi, not really hesitating, sees the Lumberjacks. You definitely need to protect your crossbows with your knights and camels in an ideal world if you're Uzi. But actually, this is interesting. So he's going to split them up. It makes Stark make a decision. And Stark's skirms are going to chase this. But Stark's skirms don't have ballistics. The crossbows could maybe meet back up here with these units. And Stark is imping now. Wow, it's so crazy. He, like, cuts army production and upgrades and everything. Meanwhile, like, Uzi's producing army all the time and villagers all the time. Stark is on the way to Imp. Dang. How important is the church placement on a scale of do it if convenient to almost necessary? Uh, I think it's probably do it if convenient. It's one of those things where it... When your eco's set up, in the late stages, you should definitely be adding them, though. Like, it becomes necessary. It's really nice to to hide from raids, but it also adds efficiency, of course, for the Georgians. 
Really nice fight for Uzi here. Uzi's army is so much stronger right now. The issue for him is he can't push Stark too much because Stark will fall right back to the castle. Our base says for Georgians, very important. They get a 10% work boost. Yeah, I don't think it's very important. I think adding more vills is, is more important. Like adding more vills and TCs first, you go town centers first and then add the churches later. Um, that, that's my take on it. Um, but again, I found that if once that eco set up, when you start to add them, that's where your eco really is flying. But if you're, you know, it depends on your style, of course, and preferences, etc. But it, it's again, just I, I got to repeat myself constantly with this dark player. It's amazing how he just sets up his base so compact. That's definitely part of it for him. Because Uzi can never comfortably commit to a fight that if the, there weren't TCs everywhere or churches or castles, that he would win every time. And now Stark is an imp. Uzi's three minutes from imp. Uzi continues to push, though. He's not going to let Stark chill. And this is a very good fight for Uzi. He's killing villagers. He's killing Manaspa. And he's just running right to the back of the eco. And he's like, you're an imp, Stark. Congratulations. But... Now Uzi takes the eco lead. Uzi has four of the five relics. All relics are collected at this point. And he is going to lose crossbows as he gets out of here, which hurts. But still, I think that's a really nice fight. Tethered Limbs, thanks for the resub. Appreciate it. Uzi still sticks around here. And the longer you stay here, the better it is for you with whatever Stark is coming with with the Imperial Age. In theory, right? You can always just produce more range units if you need to if you're Uzi. And Uzi's going to go Chukonu. Nice. This is a this is a great game. Again, the point of this tourney, right, is you are like how do I describe this? Okay, if this is a qualifier for an event where the top 10 could potentially be in the qualifier, it is very likely that one of these two players would be matched up against a top 10 player, be out in the first round, and then that's that's it, right? It done. Uh Players don't prepare as much because they say, okay, I'm just going to be screwed against someone. Uh, you know, there's less belief, there's less opportunity, there's less experience. These guys are very evenly matched due to the format of the quality. And we're seeing an excellent game here. And it's really going to ramp up here in a moment. We're going to have chemistry for Uzi, which will affect the Chukunu. I like how he's healing up his camels in the castle. I think he got herbal medicine, actually. They healed up very quickly. But Stark's got a trap now. So, like, Uzi needs to be careful. Also doesn't have heavy camel on the way. I think if Uzi had fully upgraded Chukunu and fully upgraded camels, he wins this fight. But the timing on this attack from Stark is making it awkward for Uzi right now. So look at Stark bank resources right now. Crazy. He's actually just going full trash at the moment. Very interesting. How skirm. I don't hate it. And I think eventually you go, you, you spend all that resources very quickly on Manaspa. That's the idea. Heavy Camel still 60 seconds away. The Chukunu hope to kill the Halbs. The Skirms are waiting. But if you combine Camels and Chukunu together, it can deal with this. You could tell Stark a little preoccupied runs into the castle fire there. The other thing is the Skirms for the Georgians, they lack the final armor upgrade, and Stark doesn't even have one of those armor upgrades right now. So, this is a big fight for Uzi, and Uzi's gonna hold the castle. He's still repairing. He may lose it, but he's definitely gonna take the Trebs. The castle's on a hill, which can help him, but it goes down, but he clears up Stark. Stark struggled to spend his resources here, and Uzi, again, four relics behind this. He can always make more castles. He can always take more map control, and, and Stark is just stuck in this little corner. This map is normally about expansion, right? We'll see if Uzi allows that expansion here for Stark. Stark's got a random scout there. Uzi reacts to it immediately, though. Greater reaction time. And maybe Stark just doesn't know what to make, right? Like, what are you supposed to make with, with the resources we're seeing there against the Chinese? 
I don't know. I thought he was going to be Manaspa this game. Chose not to do it because of the camels, which I guess makes sense. Siege maybe comes to mind. Maybe Onager, but that's slow and clunky. Just feels like Uzi's done a great job controlling this game. Stark's faster Imperial Age. The fast imp into, like, Pike Skirm. That felt a bit underwhelming, and Uzi's just destroying him now. Stark, of course, is going to have a shortage of access to resources because he can't expand. And Uzi building up like a madman now. This is big for Uzi, man. Uzi is the underdog here. I consider him not like a significant underdog. But if you look at their careers, Uzi has always had potential. And he hasn't really, you know, maybe lived up to it quite as much as he would have liked. And then Stark has a crazy career in 1v1s and team games. Is a veteran. And also, more recently, has fallen into the category where no one thinks he's going to do anything. And he just keeps getting results. The Hidden Cup Qualifier was a great example for that, so. Stark's also a big student of the game. Loves to watch the game, think about the game, theorize. Figure things out. So, might see Siege Ram here. Elite Chikunu's in as well, and I just don't think you beat this composition, guys. Yes. I, I, If you're Stark, you have to deal with this right now. This has to be a winning fight. You have no chance otherwise... This is your only castle. Uzi comes to the hill. He doesn't trickle trap, people. You gotta love it. Good patience. I also love the inclusion of Rams. And he'll be happy enough to take out this castle. It's gonna be Cavalier for Stark. Again, I just think this comp from Uzi, no matter what you make, there's going to be some questions on if that's the right unit. So I can't question the Cavalier that heavily. But obviously... You're going Cavalier when your opponent has Camel. That's tricky. And buildings are going to start to be rammed down. Uzi's going to have more and more reinforcements. Stark is losing his base. Uzi's going to drop a castle here too. And I, I would guess we're moments away from game one ending here. Don't think the regeneration that the Cavalier has for the Georgians is enough. I think against the Camel attack... The camels are going to get the kills. There are the there is the occasional halb in the mix and the occasional skirm focusing down what they're meant to focus down out there. But hard to do that when you're losing your buildings. And once the castle's up, then the castle also kills a lot of units that might come forward for Stark here. So, <laughs> GG. Sorry about the timing on the ads, guys. I try and run them in between games. I do like. Whatever Twitch minimum is right now, and but they do still have to run. Uh, GG, Uzi gets the win in game number one. Let's go. That was a great result. You know, I think both players actually show, had some problems there with the timings on their attacks, right? Uzi struggled in early feudal. I thought he had the better position, and then he lost. A, he took a bad fight. The Stark defended from it brilliantly. And then Stark had the better position, and Uzi defended from it, right? Maybe Stark was a little too passive here. You could argue that he was passive trying to catch up to the Chinese. I think that's largely just his style. But it felt like camel crossbow from Uzi. And like, Uzi was getting into every nook and cranny he could. He got here, boom, villagers were dying. He got over here, villagers are dying. Like, I would look at those TCs in those castles and say, shoot, I can't do damage about him, or I can't do damage with him. Uh, or against him, sorry, can't speak. And uh, maybe give up, but he didn't do that there. Okay! Ladies and gents, welcome to game number two. We've got Stark. Uh, Stark playing as the Dravidians. We'll see what he has planned here on Golden Swamp. We've got Uzi playing as the Malay. And Uzi's up 1-0. It took a nice win there with the Chinese. I would guess the Chinese was maybe his number one Civ pick on the draft, because they are that strong. The Chinese are, I think, the best land man to civilization. So if you're Stark, not that the Georgians are bad. But Stark's probably telling himself that right now. But there's still plans that he may feel are superior civs that are superior for future maps. Hmm, this is a very Stark-esque map. I say that because Stark can turtle. And Golden Swamp, you can turtle up as well. But we did see uh, that approach get punished by... Uh, by Licks 
Elix punished Sobek earlier on in the day when Sobek thought it would be a good idea to just stay three TCs and not really take the water control. And then the fast imp, forward castle, navy, killed him. And when you're up against the melee now, that's what you got to be worried about here with Stark. You do not want the melee to be able to use their faster Imperial Age or any age for that reason to be able to get some good timings on you here. So these are covered as wrecks. Um, I don't know when these games were played, but there's an uh, order to things today. I think there's another series which is scheduled after this. Um, if you don't mind, guys. So basically, so this is hosted by OGN, who's a French commentator, and he's done amazing work with this event. But I'm behind where things should be. So for that reason, I'm going to look and see kind of where they're at roughly for the live broadcast and speed up a little bit. So we're going to speed up to like, I don't want to speed through the whole game, but let's like speed up to Castle Age. That's what we're doing now. Stark's going to make a dock. I think we'll see a dock as well from Uzi, and I think we'll see a fast feudal from both. I could also speed up my commentary if you would like. Uh, I could do my best to somehow make it exciting that they are bringing in elephants and have lots, lots of water buffaloes. And now we also have docks here and we've got fishing ships and we're going to maybe have triple dock or double dock or galleys. I don't know. Or fires. We got a quick wall and it's failed. <gasps> and the scouts are now engaging. <coughs> uh, but uh, Uzi is uh, has lost a lot of HP on his scout. And now Stark's going to be annoying with the fishing ship. Sorry. I, I like I I'm dying. I always forget to breathe when I do the fast cast, but we are going to keep this fast for a moment. Thank you for the love, support. Thank you for chilling out on this wonderful... What day is it? Saturday? It's Age of Empires Day. <laughs> That's what my brain says. And Stark is going to add a barracks here, actually. Now, this is a big deal because Uzi cannot see this because his scout is currently running away from Stark. Knowing Stark, he might have actually added, started to switch onto uh, land because of that. Uzi's got a massive lead on water, though. And we are going to have... Oh, a stable from Stark tells me he wants to add scouts, but this has not been a good start for him. Wow. How many people here never watched a series with Uzi in their life? Or Stark, for that matter. And Stark was deep in Hidden Cup qualities, so you might have seen more from him there. Um, Uzi, though, wasn't. Uzi did have an epic series against my buddy Nilly in Titans League, if you watch Titans League Gold. Worth a rewatch, that one, if you want to see that. But Uzi's good, man. He's really good. And he's up already. Wow. Up already with no farms. That's crazy. So he's had a really nice KD, but he's going to have archers to deal with because Stark is here with archers. I was surprised when Stark added the stable originally. I thought it was going to be archery range, and we have Uzi now going for the TC. Again, we're just catching up. We'll slow down here in a moment. Stark still hasn't clicked up to the next stage. He's, gonna, he's not going to have access to the middle. Uh, Uzi's able to fish now, which helps. And Uzi, full three town center eco right now. And he is almost completely walled. Those two archers get in to give him a headache right now. Stark trying to come back on water here with a couple random fires and demos. But and we'll see what Stark does. Resources collected says it's pretty close. The archers also get through from Stark to be a pain. So just one archer there. Castle goes up for Uzi, though, which means he could probably start to stream some Karambits out. Again, what you do not want against the Malay. Boom! Nice shot from Stark. What you do not want here if you're Stark is for Uzi to have map control on you and drop a castle on you. You need to stop that. And the best way to stop that is to have water control, which he, of course, has tried. But, you know, he does kill most of those fishing ships. And he's even adding a couple fishing ships of his own right now. All right. Still trying to sync up with where we should be in this game as Uzi runs through with the Karambit Warriors here. 
Elephant Archers can be really good with the Dravidians in this matchup. But they're expensive, so getting full upgrades is unlikely. And Uzi's on the way to Imp. He runs to the middle, loses a villager or two to a demo. But now he's got full gold control in the middle. And Stark even collected the relics there. So those relics are just waiting for Uzi to snag snatch up. Fires v. Fires. We might see something like Galleon as well for Uzi later on, but I don't think he can do it just yet. Super speedy casting. Karambits, Elephants, Monks. Fast Fires. Uzi's in an amazing position here. Stark's still 50 seconds away from him. Now I think we can slow it down. I think we're, like, close to where uh, we should be in this series. It feels a little jarring to go from 4 speed to, to normal speed. Sorry for that, but what's Stark's plan here? Okay, so... Stark's got four docks. Uzi has about the same. And Uzi's going to drop a castle next to his traps here. I love this. Like, oh god. Oh god. Oh god. There's a demo. Be careful. Villagers. Quick wall or something. Oh man, Stark is distracted. Dude, those demos could have denied the castle and killed 20 villagers there. But Stark has other problems. He probably was quick walling because of the Karambit Warriors. He was probably getting technologies. He probably didn't realize. And the GG's called. So glad we sped up to that one. Uzi up 2-0 over Stark. Wow. Dang. I mean, he played that super well, guys. And now we'll move into game three, which is, again, Stark's home map. But, like, Uzi's eco has been fantastic. The timings on his attacks have been great. He used the melee perfectly. And Stark realizes, I just can't come back here. I'm going to lose my castles to these treps. If I engage anywhere on the water, there's a castle there from him. And he's got superior navy to me, so... GG. So we've got game number three. We've got Uzi playing as the Romans. And then we've got Stark playing as the Vietnamese. Two very solid sieves. I definitely consider the Vietnamese to be more fluid for a map like Arabia. At least if Stark can turn it into a walled game. Uh, faster and cheaper researching eco upgrades makes their economy really smooth. Vietnamese late game. They've got mobility options. They've got solid, solid um, options overall. The Romans don't really have solid range units so skirmishers archers these are things that sometimes you want on arabia they don't have but they do have the eco k the, the, the eco katie what is wrong with me they do have uh the great stable units and great infantry and then good overall economy could maybe add some scorpions there's an issue with scorpions and it is that they are slow so how you're utilizing the scorpions is important here but yes, I should put respect on the Scorpions. Dude, maybe he goes... Guys, maybe Uzi has looked at you Pudding's build order and is going to go fast castle Scorpions here. Salve. I, I don't think Uzi's that type of player, but there is a really crazy build that uh, you Pudding has used. And it's like 23 population fast castle into Scorpions, which maybe it could surprise Stark. Who knows? But yeah, someone asked me if Uzi was a was a like a newer player or a younger player. And again, he's 27. He's been playing for like 10 years, but he's been getting better. And so here's here's the thing, guys. Okay, here's the thing that I look to when I look at a player's potential. Okay, you know what I think is kind of overrated when it comes to a player's potential is what ranking they are on the ladder, right? Um, example would be, we had two players who reached 2k5, 2k6 on ranked, something Uzi's never done, uh, get 3-0'd in this very tournament, right? Um, because, like, playing Arabia all day, uh, you know, some people get a little bit choosy on opponents. Who's playing right now? Like, who who's not playing right now? Ooh, which one can I get the best win? Ooh, should I go Mongols all day? Those types of things. It, it's no substitute for mixed map tournaments good strategic mindset and experience under pressure and so uzi um really started to sign up for quite a few tournaments i'd say like two years ago 
And initially, he fell into that category of a player who played a lot of ranked, was pretty solid in ranked, but wasn't getting it together in tournaments. And he's he's doing an amazing job, and he's doing better than he was in the past in tournaments. And this would be a really big result for him. So I kind of get, I see players and their potential. I see like their their horizons broadening, I suppose, in terms of how they see the game. And Uzi's a good example. Stark, his he's had great game understanding for like 50 years, right? Like, I mean, he's only 35 or something, so I don't know how that's possible, but it feels like it. Stark has been there for a long time. Main issue, I'd say, for Stark to compete these guys, uh, the, these days rather, is just the fact that he is a bit older. He's got, you know, family, a job, uh, and he just doesn't have the speed. Now, being the Vietnamese, you know exactly where your opponent is. And so this build order and the way he's played this is acceptable. Normally, pushing in all that deer, getting all that food is a risk because you're trying to find your opponent with this military, but he knows exactly where Uzi's going to be. Look at Uzi. Uzi pushed here. He doesn't know exactly where his opponent is. But he will see a four-tile gold, which should tell him his opponents should be around here. But he also doesn't get to know what Stark's doing. All right, so this little two-militia play could surprise him. There's the scout. Now he knows Stark is there. And actually, this could be decent for Uzi. Just seeing villagers go to gold... Should make him worried. And all oh, Stark. Stark just showed up and stood here. <laughs> like, hey. But actually, Uzi doesn't take the opportunity to wall everything. He's going to need to prepare. So what you do here, guys, is you pull all villagers to one side of the lumber camp. So you have more vills to fight it off. This was intentional. Because if it's two vills over here, you lose a vill. If it's five, you could probably fight it off. Smart thinking. Stark respecting it right now, not even choosing to engage. Stark obviously going to go for an archer range behind this because he's heavy on wood and he's heavy on gold. Scout opening here for Uzi. And he actually just adds two spears. I don't mind this. Um, it might feel a bit weird. Like, no one's going to tell you to make spearmen against the militia line. But this is a good way to just get this out of the picture. You don't want your scout to be around, though, if the spearman gets at it from the opponent. Scouts will be coming out, but archers will be here soon, so Uzi's going to need something, and he should just expect that archers are coming, and he's adding the range now for skirms. Good timing. Yeah, to me, Stark, has showed he showed a lot of respect there for Uzi's ability to micro back, right? So, like, a lot of players are going to try and engage with the Militia and the Scout. But the second he saw Uzi grouped the Vils on one side, Stark basically said, I'm not fighting you then. Um, I would have liked to have seen Stark engage more. But what you're not... The reason he's not doing that, guys, is because he's doing this. He's fixing his eco. He's getting things prepped. So, there's reasons for it. But I do feel like the potential was there for maybe Stark to get some damage. I just understand why... Because you know what happens? If he doesn't kill a vill and he loses all of this, then he wasn't doing the eco back at home. And Stark just sees it as not worth it, basically. At the end of the day, I mean, the militia did force two spearmen when Stark's not exactly making units that are countered by spearmen right now. I like how Uzi and Stark have both walls here. Uh, ideally, you'd love the full wall, but that's a lot to do. This protects your eco... Uh, pretty nicely at the start also sitting the skirms behind your walls is great because the scout and the militia don't matter you could still just hit those archers resources collected higher for uzi right now uzi's up two nil doing a pretty sick job uh and stark is going to want those full walls eventually here i could see a full wall this way and full wall this way so you're kind of walling in steps here. And we'll see if Uzi... I don't know if Uzi's going to be as tempted for a full wall right now. Uzi seems to sense those archers could be around. Has four skirms, no upgrades, so does have to be careful. He might actually be comfortable now, feeling like he's defended. And he wants to actually bring the skirms forward to kill any spears. 
but I think he just spotted the scout from Stark. I love that. He sees the scout from Stark and thinks, hmm, his army must be back here. Let's actually go kill that then. And that's exactly what the case is. <laughs> now, Stark hasn't seen Uzi's army, and he's expecting the skirms to be coming forward to kill Spears, like I said. So he's adding the stable as a precaution so he can add scouts against that. Now he sees the scouts from Uzi. Doesn't see the skirms. Uzi has to pull away. Skirms are slightly out of position. And awkward times for Uzi, but... He actually would love it if Stark dives in here. Oh, if the skirms came to this side, Uzi would clear everything. And well, he might clear anything, everything anyways. He kills the scouts. Oh man, actually, that, that I mean, it would be so nice to have these be killed off already. And then be able to move forward with your army. This actually isn't as bad as it could be for Stark. Stark is going to add scouts. Uzi will have no clue. Like, usually, the scouts are going to come a little bit faster than this. But the army will be much stronger for Stark. A tower can hit both woodlines and gold. You mean, like, you want someone to go forward tower? Well, going forward tower when you can just use archers to accomplish the same goal or a similar goal seems a little risky. I like how Stark is playing this. I think three or four scouts basically make it so the skirms from Uzi can never engage against you. And Uzi didn't know those scouts were out until now. And Stark. He is to be careful as well, though, that he doesn't lose the archers unnecessarily. And then there's spears out there, too, for the scouts. Uzi was... The nice thing for him here is that he just got notified... That the scouts are out, and he had a couple moments to settle himself and have the spears grouped up properly. But I, you would want your skirms to be inside here. You would not want your army outside the walls. This could get dangerous. All these skirms could get mopped up by the scouts at any moment. First villager kill of the game. Stark still moving around. Stark getting bloodlines even. There's going to be more scouts after that and more archers. And Uzi's going to drop a tower here. Because he wants to go Castle Age. And he deletes his house so he can run in through his walls. He clicks up the castle. Obviously, in Castle, he can make knights, which could be crazy. He knows Stark's going to break through. This tower seems perfect. Yeah, scouts will want to engage for Stark. Stark thinks, oh, this is my moment. And then he's going to see a tower. And the skirms just go right for the archers. The archers are getting picked. That's not a bad engagement at all, I think, if you're Uzi. Considering the circumstances. If he wasn't up to Castle Age 2, it'd be different. This economy's nuts. Now, the Skirms, they're, they're meant to kill as many archers as possible. But this isn't the unit you really want long-term. You want the, sta the uh, stables. Uzi's playing so smooth here today. And Stark's pretty open. I'm sure he'll wall up. But definitely would have wanted to have killed more than one villager with all this investment here. Guys, there are moments I ask myself, are my parents proud? Okay? With this whole streaming thing. And uh, I think of these moments when I thank people for subbing with weird names. For example, Major Herpes. Thank you for the four months. <clears throat> Nice villager kill there from Stark. That was very sloppy from Uzi. That was avoidable. Here he snipes some archers. The stable will complete. Stark still hasn't clicked up. If Stark is walled, though... Like, as long as Stark has some walls down, he should be able to keep the knights away for a bit. The problem is, he can't go full wall like he wanted to. Yeah, this is the right play. You can tell he wanted to wall this way, but that is just not going to happen anymore. This would be a lovely time for scorpions, guys. Scorpions would be sick. We do see some uh, villagers from Uzi over here to the stone. I like that. He spent the stone on the tower, so he can't TC. We do have a monastery from Uzi. Maybe just to snag some relics, heal up some of his knights. Here he is. 
This is actually a really awkward area for Stark to defend. He needs to delete a farm or go stone walls. Yeah, has to delete the farm. Places a house. Hey, Uzi behind this. Just 5% more efficient economically. And oh man, Stark didn't go stone walls. Stark didn't go stone walls. Those four skirms are just helping so much here at hitting the villagers off of the buildings or killing the archers here. Either one's fine. Because Stark is going to want to upgrade those archers. Stark panicking a little bit here, guys. And Uzi just... He's not making any wrong moves. I feel like the timings on his eco upgrades, his military upgrades, the fights, everything's been really reasonable here. And while Stark's going to keep the army out, Uzi now. He's got seven knights. He's going to snag some relics on the map. He's going to drop a TC. Very forward TC, but a good TC if you can get it down. And Stark is going to go Cav Archers. Okay. Now is the time for Scorpions. Right? Now, he doesn't know it's going to be Cav Archers just yet, but when he sees Stark isn't upgrading these Archers, he should know. Vietnamese Cav Archers are really good. Weak Knight's going to get pulled back by Uzi to go heal it up. There's the Siege Workshop. Dude, he's playing so good with the timings. Sees the Cav Archers, moves around with the Knights, getting Husbandry so there's more mobility. And I think, like, just a couple Scorpion... What you want is you want the Scorpions to be grouped. And if you have three together, the Cav Archers have to run away. Even just one or two, right? But three especially... Feels like a very natural spot for the Romans with their bonuses. Boom. Knights and scorpions. This is what you wanted. Stupid villager, where are you going? Oh my god, do you see that? That guy had a death wish. One TC for Stark. Could always add the second, but in his mind, he's behind. So he's going to queue up everything with cav archers. Oh my god, guys. Stark has three ranges. Okay, he is producing out of this one. Never mind. He wasn't for a second. Like, he didn't have one of them control groups. Husbandry for Stark. Things are messy. He does find a kill on the monk with that extra scout from earlier, though. Still ends up... It's going to be two relics for Uzi. And Uzi's got the scorpions out. I'd like to see Uzi outpost. So he kind of knows where the Cav Archers are, but he does lose a Skirm there. He knows they're coming forward. And boom, immediately Stark runs into Scorpions. And now you need something to deal with the Scorpions if you're Stark. So maybe a couple Knights from your stable could alternatively go for like Manganels, but then Manganels can be sniped by the Knights. It's really complicated. And Uzi going to get Ballistics now. Oh, dude! <laughs> Rushing Ballistics for the Scorpions? That's sick! I would never do that. I would never do that. But with the Romans, that's how it works. That's probably what you should do. Cheap Scorpions and Scorpions affected by Ballistics. That's sick. Oh, man. Stark is under pressure. This is so much. The monks are even here healing. No, not Russian ballistics. Rushing with a G. Ballistics. Yeah, now it's in. Oh. I mean, I don't know what you do here if you're Stark. You call the GG. Uzi 3 0s Stark. Wow. What crazy play from him, man. Again, like the timings from Uzi, pretty clean. It's really smooth economically. A lot of people, when they get the Castle Age lead, they, they waste their advantage by going with too much eco or too much military. It was the perfect balance. He dropped the second town center. He went into the Scorpions with the Knights, got some relics. Like Every little tiny detail you could possibly be thinking of he was doing as a player. And then he was going to drop a castle, guys. Like he was going to have a forward castle at some point here. GG. And when I think of both Stark and Uzi, I would say they're both a bit slower. And, you know, maybe Stark actually excels against the micro nerds who try and kill him fast. Uzi was happy to accept that these games would go late. And Uzi wins 3-0 here in World Rumble 2 Qualifier. Good stuff. So I want to see now 
what what the next step is for Uzi uh, on the bracket. 3-0, I, I would have said maybe Stark 3-1 as a prediction. Uh, let's see. So it looks like that Uzi is going to be up against the winner of Daniel and Cosmonauts. Daniel Cosmonaut should be really good. Cosmonaut's extremely underrated, and then Daniel is a beast. Daniel's my favorite, but Cosmonaut is... I don't know if, if it's fair to say he's one of the most underrated players in this bracket, but I think he might be. I think he might be. A lot of people don't know about how good Cosmonaut is. He's put up some good performances. So, yeah, Uzi moves on there. Uh, other sets to happen. I don't know what the next set is. We'll see if we cover more of them today, but uh, other sets to happen are all listed here, of course.